Hello, everybody. We are uh, very excited to have you here with us today uh, to share with you information on our new medical assisting diploma program that is being offered here at our Lancaster Center. Um, my name is Susan Lynch, and I'm the director of the Lancaster Center. And I have two other presenters um, here with me today, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and then we will get started. I'm Carol Glass. It's so nice to meet you. I'm so glad you're here today. I am the uh, recruiter for the Medical Assisting Diploma Program, and I'm so excited that it'll be here in Lancaster. And thank you for coming. Nikki? Hi, I'm Nikki Marhefka, and I am the Medical Assisting Program Director. So I am responsible for organizing the courses and keeping everything together. Uh, yeah, I hope that you'll want to hear more about the program and great profession. So uh, we'll, I guess, begin then. All right. All right. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen and then we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. So with Central Penn College, um, just a little bit of background for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with Central Penn. Our main campus is located in Somerdale, PA, and then we do have our center here in Lancaster. We are located off of Old Philadelphia Pike. Ah, there we go. Sorry, I was having a technical problem there. So that's that just a picture happened. of the outside of our Lancaster Center. All right, so with Central Penn College, our mission is uh, to open opportunities to students from a variety of academic backgrounds by providing them education needed for employment and advancement in the field. Specifically with the School of Health Sciences, which is where the Medical Assistant Diploma Program falls under, uh, it dedicates itself to prepare future professional practitioners in the fields of human services. Um, we use innovative application of knowledge, scholarship and hands-on education. Uh, the health science majors strive to enhance service to dynamic individual community and societal needs. Okay, so with medical assisting itself, um, I want to talk to you a little bit more about medical assisting and what it is for those of you that maybe are not that familiar with it. Maybe you've heard of the term, you know, obviously it's in the medical field, but aren't quite sure what a medical assistant does. So a medical assistant performs routine administrative and clinical tasks to keep offices and clinics of physicians, podiatrists, chiropractors, and optometrists running smoothly. Some different career options that are available for somebody that is a certified medical assistant is a certified medical assistant, a medical office assistant, an EKG technician, phlebotomy technician, for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with the term phlebotomy, that is drawing of blood. A health unit clerk and medical claims examiner. And please keep in mind, those are just some of the main job opportunities that exist with a clinical medical assistant. There may be some others as well. With the job outlook, uh, with the medical assisting field, um, the job outlook is uh, really good. It is expected to grow 19% through 2029, according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Specifically here in Pennsylvania, in Lancaster County, the job growth is projected to be 20.9% 20 through 2026. So obviously this is a field that if you are to get into the job outlook, um, you know, at least through the next six to nine years looks really good. Medical assistants have, okay, we, when you look at a medical assistant, they usually have what we call front office and back office. Front office is more the administrative tasks, back office is more the clinical tasks. So with the administrative duties, some of these include answering telephones and emails, greeting patients, updating uh, and filing medical records, filling out insurance forms, handling billing and bookkeeping, scheduling appointments, and arranging hospital admission and laboratory services. 
again, this isn't necessarily all encompassing. There could be other administrative tasks that fall within your duties as well. Some of the clinical duties include taking medical histories, recording vital signs such as blood pressure, um, height and weight, maybe blood oxygen, explaining treatment procedures, preparing patients for exams, collecting laboratory specimens, basic laboratory testing, instructing patients about medications, and then drawing blood. So I'm going to now turn the presentation over to our Program Director of Medical Assisting, um, Nikki Marhafka. Yes, um, there certainly is plenty of opportunity for medical assistants. Right now, there's a great demand. They are really in need. So here again, our program will make sure that you have all the skills that you need to enter as a paraprofessional in this area. And here's Stephanie, one of our students. You can see some of the lab equipment in the background, and she's got tubes because she was getting supplies out to draw blood. Um, so this is the diploma program, and it will be offered in Lancaster on ground during the day. Uh, so the way it looks like now, uh, there'll be five hours for four days a week, and we are on terms. So there's 11 week terms with a two week break between them. And you can see there's 10 core courses. So that nine of these will be taken three per term for the three terms. So each day you will have the three classes. And um, those are the 24 core courses. There'll be each morning you'll start out with a, um, it would be an anatomy and physiology, medical terminology, and what we call pathophysiology when the body isn't working well then your clinical skills that relate to that, and then the administrative skills that relate to that. And after those three terms of 11 weeks, and you've learned all these skills, uh, because there are over 250 of them that you will do and you will be evaluated on them, so you will know them when you leave, you will go on to internship. An internship is six credits. Uh, what that involves is 160 hours uh, in a clinic, plus a review course, and then taking a certification exam. And the reason why we say about six months, because the, the three terms are will add up to nine months. And then here again, there'll be a little bit of flexibility on internship. Perhaps somebody wants to do the 40 hours a week, will complete in four weeks. Another person may want to do a little three days a week. Uh, we have some part-time available in you know, cutting down a little bit on the hours. Um, so then looking more specifically at the coursework, as we mentioned, there is the structure, function, and pathophysiology. That's the anatomy and physiology, how the body works, and then a pathophysiology, how it doesn't work. And of course, we use medical terminology involved in that so that you, you know, can understand reports and, and speak with other healthcare providers. And then, as we mentioned, the clinical skills. These would be the things like assessing the blood pressure, learning how to draw blood, do the finger sticks, the EKGs, the pulmonary function test. And then when they mentioned the administrative skills, we have two administrative skills, one and two, and then health insurance is the last one. It is specializes in that area. But here again, as I said, you've got to greet patients. You need to understand how the medical record works. It's all electronic these days. There is also a practice management software that you will learn to use that they use for billing and coding, which blend into the insurance because you will learn to submit insurance claims. And you know, you in this course, you will not be a in-depth coder, but you will have coding skills. You will be able to do that. And um, you know, so again, other things like making those appointments and things like that. So you've got all that in your classes, and then at, when those three terms are finished, you've got the internship. And like we said, 160 hours. You know, you could do 40-hour weeks. You could even go down probably to 25-hour weeks. You'll get that done. There will be a review course in preparation because at the end you will take a certification exam. And here again, uh, you may be starting with the registered medical assistant by the American Medical Technologies Association. It's a well-recognized um, certification as is the CMA exam, which is the certified medical assistant by the NHA. And then hopefully we, there are some other ones too that we may work in there. 
Uh, so obviously learning outcomes. So this is what you want to be able to do. And this is, you know, our, we call these our program objectives. These are all encompassing. So obviously effective communication is very, very important. So you will obviously learn key ways there to improve your communication so people understand you and you understand them. Obviously in healthcare, we need to treat patients with respect, dignity, and understanding. So you'll have some experience uh, learning how to work with those areas. Technology, talked about that already. We have the um, EMR, the electronic medical record, and the practice management software. So a lot of things are computer-based these days, but you're getting opportunity to learn and work with it. Uh, certainly we want you to come out there of uh, this program being confident and ethical and professional. So we address those in the program as well. And like I said, give you plenty of time to practice and we assess you on your skills. So here again, you can have that confidence when you leave. And then the last one, we uh, will be eventually have the accreditation under KHAP, which Mayor has a list of requirements and we will be starting and they, each of these will be covered in the program. So that here again, you get the top of the line, current assessment, um, teaching what you need to know and what you need to do as a medical assistant. Um, well, it talks about, and then you heard me mention about all these 250 items that you'll be assessed on. And we want you to have an 80% on each one to be considered successful. Uh, here again, you have opportunities, plenty to practice. You even have three opportunities to try to get that 80%. But we're going to make sure that you are at that 80% level before you leave so you are confident in what you're doing. And then as a whole, when we add a little bit of theory to back this up, we expect you to have a C, which at our college is 73% in all of your courses uh, to finish. And here again, all we're looking to is we want to put competent medical people out there. Uh, certainly lots to do, but, and I think you'd want to do that. You want to be really good at what you do to help the patient to work well in the practice where you choose. Um, we will have an appearance policy. It's kind of liberal. Uh, we'd ask you to wear scrubs each day. They can be any color. They can be any pattern. I would suggest you just have a few, maybe some things you can mix and match. Uh, because here again, if you get a job, you may be required to wear something specific for them. The only thing with your scrubs, we ask that you wear an appropriate shoe, uh, a lace-up leather or uh, pleatherish type sneaker, a clogs, as long as they don't have holes in them, and um, a, obviously a uniform shoe, because you will be drawing blood, you will be doing injections, and if you don't want to drop a needle on your foot, so you don't want it to go through there. And we want our shoes to kind of be appropriate with our, our clothes. All right, uh, I will let Carol now tell you about um, how you would apply for the program. Okay, so thank you, Nikki. That was great information even for me as well. <laughs> so I, I enjoyed that. Uh, so now you're thinking, well, how, how am I going to make this happen? Well, the good news is I can help you through the entire process. I will be more than happy to um, work with you. You will need, a, obviously, to apply to the college, and we'll discuss that later. A uh, minimum of a GPA of 2.0 from the official transcripts from the last school attended to be considered for acceptance. And your GED will be accepted as well. And two reference forms. So those reference forms I will supply to you so you can um, take care of getting your references. So the process, I'd like to tell my students the process is much like doing a jigsaw puzzle. So there's lots of pieces moving around. So the first one would be, you've seen this webinar or you've met with me and you love the program, apply. Apply to the program. Um, be sure that you uh, take care of any financial aid that you might want to use by applying for the FAFSA, the Free Application for Student Aid. Uh, if you had a virtual appointment, please feel free to come in and have a tour. Uh, you'll need to submit your college or high school transcripts, your reference letters, and then I will submit you for acceptance. Many of you, if not all of you, are 
probably thinking like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get a job? Uh, we have an amazing uh, career services department, including an internship coordinator. 90.6% uh, of our students were employed in their chosen field or continued their education within one year of graduation. How do we do that? We have a, a great team in our career services department. They will do mock interviews with you. They'll help you with your resume. Uh, we have alumni networking receptions as well as uh, career expos and job fairs. Uh, so please take advantage of any and all opportunities that our career services department offers to you. As I mentioned earlier, there are different types of financial aid. Uh, the majority of our students receive some form of financial aid. Um, we suggest, but do not require you to uh, use your FAFSA, your free application for student aid. You can, uh, for those who qualify for aid, there are grants, scholarships, loans, and of course you have other sources, employee reimbursement, military benefits, as, as well as PA state funding or work study program. As I mentioned, there, this is the um, information for your free application for student aid. Never should you ever pay for any information with the FAFSA. Please use the www.fafsa.gov and our school code is listed there as 004-890. You will be required to do the Master Promissory Note and Entrance Counseling. Uh, and your financial aid advisor that will be assigned to you will explain all that in depth. Every situation is unique. So many potential options we can help you with. Um, please contact admissions. Um, my information, I'm not sure it's on this particular site, but my direct number is 717-728-2542. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Thank you. So um, by calling me, you, I can get you set up. We can set up an appointment, take you through your steps. If you had some more specific questions, you could call Nikki or email Nikki, and she would be more than happy to answer any of your questions. And of course, our center director, Susan Lynch, is also available to help you. Um, in order to complete the application, super easy, just go to centralpen.edu and click on apply now. You'll notice that we do not have any type of fee that's attached to that application. I like to tell students, your application is your indication of interest and I will treat it uh, with respect and call you and get you started at Central Penn College. Wonderful. All right. Well, that completes um, the uh, slideshow for today with all of our information. Um, certainly, as Carol did mention, if you do have any questions or, you know, you're interested in applying, need some help, please feel free to reach out to any one of us, um, myself, Carol, or Nikki, um, and we can certainly answer any questions and help you along the process. Thank you. Thank you have a good day. Today. Have a good day. Bye now.